first question, Jonathan Fagan. Hi, Rafael. Um, the previous drafts that were trades and maneuvers, did this one feel compared to that as if things just fell into place? And how are you feeling as the picks before yours played out, before your selections? Um, yeah, I mean, we were we were actually really active um, uh, in this draft, kind of. Um, uh, it just didn't it just didn't result in anything. So it's kind of funny, maybe more active than any draft, just trying to get to different places for, for various reasons. Um, na namely because cam was dropping. And so we were trying hard to get up to get him, and, uh, and then we got him. So it, it kind of worked out. So in that sense, I think, yeah, I think maybe that just fell in place. Um, so we're, yeah, we're, we're definitely excited that we ended up with the guys we ended up with. Kelly Eco. Rafael, you know, just for all the pre-draft work that you guys did over the weeks and months to be able to leave this draft with two players that most considered were top five or top whatever, top seven, how does that feel from a front office standpoint? I mean, yeah, I mean, we're really happy. We think um, we, we we feel like we got a lot, you know, two really um, talented guys and um, and um and we improved kind of the potential of our team on a going forward basis. And so today was a, was a, was a really good day. Daniel Lerner. You mentioned Cam falling, which I think surprised a, a lot of people. Just how surprised were you that he was still there at 20? And then there has been some reports that that was because some teams were concerned about his physicals. Do you guys have any concerns about his health at all? No, we don't. I mean, I think we, you know, we, uh, cam cam physical in Chicago, uh, every team had access to it. Our doctors had access to it. Uh, we were very comfortable with it. Um, I think he's going to have, you know, knock on wood. I think he's, uh, he's well positioned to have a really good career. So, um, uh, you know, people, I guess different people have different opinions and I, I don't know why any team is do any other team is doing what they're doing, but, Again, I know we're really excited to have him. Vanessa Richardson. Hi, Rafael. What were some of the intangibles that really drew you to Amon Thompson? Oh, I mean, I'm really excited. I'm excited <laughs> about everybody, but um, you said intangibles or intangibles? Sorry, intangibles. So we know about his athleticism, what he can do on the group, but what were some of the intangibles that you really liked about him? Yeah, I mean, he he seems very driven. He's very serious. Um, not not that he's not fun or anything else, but he's, um, you know, in the brief time we've spent together, it's not like you get the opportunity to live together the way you do during a season. Um, but he's he seems to be a very mature young man for his age, and kind of very serious about his craft, very dedicated. Um, I I, th I think he's been very well prepared by. Uh, his family for for the journey he's about to take. Brian Bearfield. Mr. Stone, do you think that you uh, drafted two players who reflect your new head coach, Emir Doka, as far as the attitude and the work ethic is concerned? I do. Cody Davis. Hey, Mr. Stone, um, looking back, on what you guys were able to do in 2021 and 2022 and tonight, how do you feel about the overall collection of talent you you guys were able to get, especially without receiving a number one pick in neither one of these drafts? You know, I think um, the NBA has set up a system where, you know, the, I, the, the, screw that. The, the draft is by, you, you know, trying to predict how good people will be um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years from now is really hard. Um, uh, the game is really hard. The lifestyle is really hard. Um, um, but um, I do think we've done um, overall a very good job of identifying talented guys, putting them in a position where where they could succeed. And um, you know, and and that's that's my job is to is to try and find people who have a chance to be really good in time. And it's not go all in on a single person and, and just, and if someone doesn't end up being the best player in the history of basketball, by no means does that mean that I failed or they failed. And I, I, I think that, 
you know, what we're really trying to do is build a really good group that can win a championship as a team. It is a team game. Uh, you absolutely need talent. You need tons of it. Um, and, um, and you kind of need, you, you need a steady influx of it. And so, um, you know, I think, um, I, again, I think, you know, we, we kind of perceive this summer as the end of stage one and, 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 a probably the the most important thing about stage one of our rebuilding process was to infuse the organization with talented young players. And, and I think we've, we've been able to do a good job of that. Adam Spalling. Hey, Rafael, um, does anything that you did tonight, will, will that impact the type of player that you target in free agency? No. And with, uh, with Amin, um, you had Jalen and you had Jabari kind of start from day one. What are kind of your expectations for Amen uh, for next season? Uh, come in, work as hard as he possibly can, um, compete like crazy, and do whatever coach coach uh, asks of him. And um, that's that's my expectation, not just of him, but of of all of our players. Ali Khan Bajani. Hey, Rafael, back in April, before you hired Ime, you had mentioned that in the next coach, you wanted to have you wanted them to have a real vision for how to implement young guys and incorporate some veterans. Um, so now with two draft picks tonight and nine first rounders in the last three years and potentially adding veterans, like you said, can you share some of the vision Ime and you have for how to incorporate young players with the potential veteran additions? Um, I yeah, um. I think that's more a question for him, but even more so, I think that's a question for after free agency as opposed to as opposed to now. I think we're 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 kind of um, the drafts an important part of what we're doing, but but we also have to get through free agency and to this, uh, you know. And I I think after that, I'll be better positioned to answer your question. Lashar Binkley. Uh, hello, Mr. Stone. Um, coming into the uh, draft, um, kind of a two part question. Did were your were your um, organization considering trading the number twenty pick, and did that all kind of change once Cam with more started to slide down the draft board? Um, yeah, we were considered trading it, um, um, but both ways, like we we were active, we were actually trying to trade up um, the vast, but we we always intended to try and trade up in this draft. Um, um, didn't know that we we weren't successful, so guess that was going to fail. Um, but, but that was when we thought cam was going to go in the top six or seven picks. So we, we thought, we thought that there was maybe some strategy that, that made sense for us and getting a little higher. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, but we, we also talked about if that wasn't successful trading out, if, if we didn't like somebody at the pick and we were talking to a number of teams about what that would look like. And some of those, some of those potential transactions were very attractive, but again, um, not not nearly as attractive as picking camp, which is what we did. Michael Shapiro. Hi, Rafael. Um, did it surprise you tonight when Whitmore slid outside of the lottery? And was he at any point in consideration for y'all at that number four spot? Um, uh, I, I was shocked that he slid outside the lottery. Um, and we considered a lot of people um, at the number four spot. Um, we did. We did. Um, um, getting weird getting feedback. Weird feedback. Sorry, about, Sorry that. about that. Um, um we, we did this. We did. We're really comfortable with the men. Um, and we feel extraordinarily lucky that he was there to, to for us to take. So I think, um, yeah. And and I'm very happy with both of them. Jackson Gatlin. Hey, Rafael, congrats on completing another draft. Uh, Cam mentioned that he had been in Houston for about a month and a half during the, the pre-draft process. What was that pre-draft process like and how much confidence do you have moving forward organizationally with that pick, despite some of the reporting out there about some of the potential health concerns? Yeah, I mean, again, like he came in and worked out like, I don't know, three, four days ago, something like that. He looked great. Um, I saw him in Santa Barbara a month ago, looked great. Um, our doctors think he's going to do just fine. So, um, yeah, I, what people reporting, I don't know. And kind of, I don't care. Um, I, I, I obviously care very much what our, what our, what our doctors say, but you know, that's, we rely on them and, uh, and I'm very comfortable. Um, and in terms of being here in Houston, yeah, no, he, he, uh, 
I think he's been here for quite a while working out, um, working out at one of the local gyms here that, uh, that a lot of, a lot of people, including my son work out at. And so everybody's, everybody's known he was around. And, um, I think, um, you know, when, when he came in and we had a chance to interview him, he talked about how much he loved the city. So, um, and it was very obviously genuine. I, I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with Cam. Um, and so, uh, so I think this is a really good fit. Jonathan Fagan. My power went out for a little while, so I'm sorry if you uh, have had a question exactly like this, but um, we've heard a great deal leading up to the draft about a men's strengths and weaknesses. How do you see those playing out initially and then over time? And did I, I said amen, I think. And I mean, amen. Yeah, no, you, you did say amen. Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, hopefully he ends up being the best basketball player to ever released him up. That would, that would work for me. I think, um, I think amen's true. You know, he's, 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 he's extraordinarily physically gifted. And um, I, I don't know. I don't know that anybody who's ever come through our gym has ever been a more impressive athlete. And, um, um, and he can really handle the ball and he can really pass the ball and he can really defend. Uh, it's, that's, that's like, su <coughs> excuse me, that's super exciting. Um, and, um, you know, and we'll see, right. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see where it all ends up, but, um, yeah, I am, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm really, I, I think I'm at a chance to be really special and I can't wait to work with him. Um, and I just, I love the way he plays basketball. I think, I think that the things he does, the things that come natural are really, it's, it lends itself to winning basketball. So, um, so we're excited. And and I think, I do think he fits really well with this, with, with our current, with our current group. Um, and as, as that group grows, as we bring in free agents and everything else, I, I think, uh, I think it's likely to be a good fit as well. Thank you. Chancellor Johnson. Hey, Rafael, when you think about um, what Amen and Cam bring to the team uh, athletically and, versat uh, and um, with their versatility, uh, what kind of stands out and, and how they fit in that group in those two components? We're athletic. I think we can jump. So I think, um, you know, we already were and and we doubled down and, um, I, the, the, you know, it's never a bad thing to be a, to, to be a, a hyper athletic team. And I think uh, I think we'll we'll be that. Um, so I think that's what stands out to me. We'll take two more. Brian Bearfield. How motivated do you think that uh, Cam will be now that he slipped out of that? You know, he thought that he would be in that in those first seven picks, and you all were able to get him at number two, at number twenty. How motivated do you think he's going to be, and will he play with that chip on the shoulder? You know, I think he kind of plays with a chip on his shoulder anyway. Um, and I'm sure he'll, I'm sure it's a little bit of added motivation, but you know, he should, today shouldn't be a bad day for him. His dreams just came true. And even if it came true in a slightly different form than, than maybe he hoped or he anticipated, like, you know, there's, there, there are millions of us, myself included, who, who, who were on the grind and gave, gave their all and didn't get anywhere near where he got to today. So he, he needs to make sure he enjoys the day and enjoys the experience. And, um, and you know, and um, where you get picked has zero determination on how you, how successful you are. So now it's on, now it's entirely on him to, to become the player that I know he can be and that he knows he can be. And last question, Ali Kambajani. Along with your two draft picks tonight, do you plan on having any of your young players from last year's roster play in the summer league? And if so, which players? Oh yeah, we'll 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 see when we get to Vegas who's playing. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you guys. Good night, everybody. Sorry it's so late. <laughs>